In this video, I'm going to discuss a visual intuition for the Lorentz force. Now, the Lorentz force is the force a point particle experiences due to electric and magnetic fields. So electromagnetic fields influence the motion of charged particles. So let's have a look at a visual intuition as to what the Lorentz force is actually saying. As a quick summary, the Lorentz force takes the force acting on a particle due to electromagnetic fields, and it summarizes it in this expression over here. This Q denotes the charge, which is a scalar value, and this E denotes the electric field, that's a vector value, V is the velocity, that's also a vector value, and B is the B field, which is the magnetic field, that is also a vector value. Uh, and this vector quantity and this vector quantity are taken together with a cross product and they're used to make the magnetic force term. So this equation uh, can actually be modified a little bit. You can distribute the charge to both of these terms and you have two separate terms, the electric force term and the magnetic force term. We're going to have a look at the electric force term and the magnetic force term visually first independently and then we'll combine them together and see what happens when you have electric fields by themselves uh, magnetic fields by themselves, and what happens when you combine electric fields and magnetic fields at the same time. So, first of all, let's have a look at electric fields because they, they behave in a little uh, more simple way than magnetic fields do. So, if you'd have a magnetic, uh, or sorry, an electric field acting, and let's say uh, we've got a particle over here, and we've got an electric field that is acting in this direction, right? So, that is an electric field. And it's pointing in this direction. Where will the force, due to that electric field point, well, it's going to be in the exact same direction. The force is going to point in this direction. But it's going to be a scaled up version of the force. So the force will also point in this direction. It's going to be parallel. These two guys, they're going to be parallel with each other. So that's going to be the force vector. And the force vector is going to be Q times the electric field. So in this diagram, I've shown them uh, going parallel to each other, and that's because it's just a scalar multiplication. The direction is preserved, right? All the components have the same relative sizes to each other if you multiply by a scalar. You're not mixing the components together. You're just scaling each individual component by the scalar value Q. So that's what the electric force looks like. Now, what does it look like for a magnetic force? Well, magnetic force, it doesn't just take the scalar multiple of the B field. It takes the cross product of the velocity with the magnetic field, and then it scales it by the charge. So what would that look like? Well, uh, we actually need three dimensions for this. So I want you to take your hand out and use uh, the right hand rule. So take your right hand, take the index finger to be the velocity, your middle finger to be the magnetic field, the B field, and your thumb will point in the direction of the force due to the magnetic field or the magnetic force. So if you imagine we have some kind of situation where the velocity is going in this way, so a velocity vector that way, and then let's say we have in the same plane, so imagine there's this is like a 3D sketch. We have a B field going this way. Then the force is going to point, so if you imagine a plane that is formed by this, over here. So this is some kind of plane uh, in 2D. It's a two-dimensional plane in 3D space. And then what we're going to have is perpendicular to both of them, the force is going to stick out in this direction. So this is going to be perpendicular, and this over here, this is also going to be perpendicular. So this guy is perpendicular to both of them. V and B don't necessarily have to be perpendicular. But if they are perpendicular, then everything is nice because we don't actually have to do a complicated cross product all we have to do is take the product of Q, V, and B. Right? QVB is the force if all of these guys are mutually orthogonal. But it's usually not that simple because you have to take a cross product if this angle is anything different from a 90 degrees. So if this plane over here is V cross B, then if you scale that uh, area of a parallelogram that's spanned by these two guys by the charge Q, you will actually get the force. And this is the force the magnetic force, which is Q times V cross B. Right, so V cross B sticks out of this plane that these guys lie in, and it's also scaled up by the charge. 
So if you have a negative charge, this will actually point in the opposite direction. Right? So this force will point downwards. It won't point above the plane, it will point below the plane. So this force vector is normal to the plane that is spanned by V and B. So imagine V and B are two vectors, and together they can be used to construct an entire two-dimensional plane. And the plane, if you take that plane and you find a vector that is normal to it, it will be pointing in the same direction as the force. But how do we determine the magnitude of that force? Well, we take the cross product of V and B, and then we scale it up by Q. Now, I did just mention that Q is actually going to determine the sign of this. Because it's, if, it's negative, if it's a negative charge, it's going to point in the opposite direction than if it's a positive charge. And that's actually used to distinguish the charge of particles. Right? If you take the trajectory of something that's flying in, in 3D space, some little uh, charged particle that's, that's flying, a proton, which is positively charged, is going to go in one direction, and an electron, which is negatively charged, will go in the opposite direction. Now they won't curve with the same, uh, they won't have the same curvature to their trajectory because the proton is a lot more massive than the electron. But what is true is that the direction in which they will be deflected will be the opposite. So the charge determines which way you get deflected uh, if it's a magnetic field. So what can magnetic fields be used to do? They can be used to change the trajectory. They can be used to deflect, or they can be used to trap particles in circular motion. So you can actually trap particles in uniform circular motion with magnetic fields. Electric fields, on the other hand, because the electric field points in the same direction as the force, you can actually use the electric field to either accelerate or decelerate a charged particle. If the velocity of the particle is pointing in this direction, and then you have an electric field that's pointing in this direction, the electric field will point in the same direction as the force, and the force will point in the same direction as the acceleration. So the acceleration will be opposing, will be opposite to the direction of the velocity. And what's that going to do? That's going to slow down the particle. So if a particle is moving this way, and you want to slow it down, you could put an electric field going that way, right, in the opposite direction. But if, on the other hand, you want to add kinetic energy to that particle, you want to put the electric field pointing in the same direction as the velocity. Because then the acceleration and the velocity will point in the same direction. And if your velocity and your acceleration point in the same direction, the acceleration will cause the velocity to keep increasing as a function of time. So remember that velocity, position, acceleration, force, electric field, magnetic field, these guys are all vector quantities. But charge is a scalar quantity. So it does not have a direction associated with it. Now, as a final little thing, we've talked about the electric force, and we've talked about the magnetic force. Let's do a little combination of both. Let's say that we have our little charge, and let's say the electric force has told us that we have to go in this way, right? We have to point in this direction. So this is the force, I'll do a little subscript E. It's the force due to the electric field. Then, let's say the magnetic force has told us that there is a F, an F, I'll, uh, I'll write that a little bit better, I'll just rub that out, I'll rub that slightly a little bit better, so we got F with a subscript B, that's a magnetic field, and so let's say that this guy came from the electric force, and this guy came from the magnetic force. So how do we get this guy? We took the cross product of V and B, multiplied it by Q. How do we get this guy? We just took the electric field and scaled it up by Q. Now we have two terms in this equation. That's this electric force term and this magnetic force term. So how do we find the total force? Well, we take the vector sum. So the vector sum is going to be uh, determined using this little tip-to-tail method. And it's going to point somewhere in this direction. And that's going to be the total force. So this guy over here, this is the total force F. This is the sum of the electric force and the magnetic force. And uh, you know that this actually can simplify. If this guy goes to zero, then the total force is just the magnetic force. And if the magnetic force goes to zero, then the total force is just the electric force. When will you encounter uh, this situation where this guy is not here? Well, that's if the magnetic field doesn't exist. And the magnetic field is zero in electrostatics, where there's no moving charges. But as soon as you have moving charges, magnetic fields start to get generated. So then you're going to have to deal with magnetic fields, and you have to incorporate this component as well. So I hope this video 
has provided you with a visual intuition for the Lorentz force. The Lorentz force is a way of quantitatively describing how uh, a electric field and a magnetic field will influence the trajectory of a charged particle. Now remember, this has to be a point particle. This can be generalized to other systems, but this guy is a point particle interacting with electromagnetic fields. 